Dr. Daniel Vargas. We want to give God all glory. Thank. Want to give honor to uh, this house, uh, Pastor Mom. Thank you for allowing us to use this beautiful facilities. And all you that here this evening, may God richly bless you through the Word of God as we um, hear from our teacher tonight. Shall we pray? Abba, Father, we thank you for your love, for your goodness, that you would share your word to our hearts. May we apply it, God, and let it be engraved in the tables of our hearts, God, that we won't just hear it, or God, let it be transparent, that we would walk as light into this dim world that has no light. Bless our teacher tonight and use him in a great and a mighty way, Father. Those that's watching online, may you inspire them, God, to go deeper into your word. As we give you glory and honor, we commit this time to you. In Jesus, Yeshua's mighty name, we pray. And we all say, Amen, Amen. Dr. Rabbi Vargas, bless you. Hello. Bless you. Hallelujah. Good evening. God bless you and enrich you, cause his face to shine upon you. Give you the peace. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Scyther. Yes. Opening your place here for teaching of God's word. I want to just mention, um, you might still have one of these little slips of paper. It says, Ask Rabbi. So today, if you still have that one, um, I, I'd like for you to put a question there if you have. If not, I, we, we're going to distribute one to whoever needs one right now. You can ask a rabbi, and I will uh, endeavor in the weeks to come to answer at least one of the questions. So I won't be answering all the questions all at one time, but at least I will have these two to answer those. Okay, thank you so much. Again, we want to thank those that are watching through live stream tonight. Um, I'm going to continue a little bit more as we started last week in the life um, of the great man of wisdom called Solomon. The study of the, the, the life of Solomon is a, really, it's a must. It's not a book just to read, oh, you know, Solomon this and that, but we need to study this book because we need to practice what's in that book. So I think it's a must for every person First of all, especially if you're, if you're called to ministry, but, but parents as well, because it's filled with so much wisdom for parents, parents that today um, need wisdom in raising their children. Um, so it's for those in ministry and parents and for every believer in the Lord. Just looking at the interactions between God and Solomon alone if we just look at that interaction and not just read through that, what we're going to discover in, in reading that is that we're going to get invaluable learnings. Is if you look at the interaction, how they interact with each other. Because actually the Bible says that God talked to um, Solomon. At least twice he talked to him directly. And so we, we want to be able to do something very similar because we're called to pray and to talk to God. David had died. Solomon had taken his place, his son, as king of Israel. And Solomon, Solomon loved the Lord, just like you and I. But by his own admission, he was too young, he felt and inexperienced to be the king. So this, um, we know about Solomon. God appeared to him, not just talked to him. So there was a form in a way that God appeared to him. As for me, I hope for you as well, I cannot live in this world at all. A world that's saturated with so much uh, deception, with deceiving spirits, 
false teachers, false prophets, without the need to exercise discernment. This is where Solomon can come in. And I cannot overstate this, the importance of why move forward without having wisdom and how to deal with all of this very heavy deceiving spirits that many shall come in my name and if we cannot discern their message, what they're saying, what they're doing, then you get caught up with all of that. Everything about your life and about your calling will change the moment that you enter into God's world of Hogma. Say Hogman. Yeah, that word is um, in Hebrew, it's for wisdom. The world of wisdom, the Hebrew word for wisdom. Hogma. Now, through the scriptures, all the way to from Bereshit to J the book of Revelation, Hogma, wisdom is divinely embodied in the person of Yeshua, our Messiah. For he is Chokma. He is wisdom. He says, I do nothing except I hear it from the Father. And once he hears it from the Father, he turns that hearing into wisdom. Then it's given to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gives you the understanding of what? The wisdom that comes from Yeshua, who hears from the Father. And of course, we know that they are three in one. Therefore, the wisdom Solomon came, had came from who? Came from Yeshua, who is wisdom. Good. So, you, do you love him? Yeah, we do. Did he save you? Yes, he did. The one that loved you and saved you is wisdom. And you need to have an interaction with wisdom. Not just say, Jesus, I love you, Lord, I love you, you know. Thank you for saving me. And not tap into that incredible, amazing, above and beyond all thoughts and measure of the wisdom that he is and came to be a wisdom for you and to give you his wisdom. For he is wisdom. So you and I know the person who is Wisdom, right? Who is he? Yes. Yeshua. You and I know him. Okay. We know that the scriptures compel us to have this mind that is in us, that is in wisdom. That is Yeshua. So we have to have a mind of wisdom. Wisdom. You see, if you just read it and say, have this mind in you that is of Messiah Yeshua, and you don't realize that he is wisdom. He's literally not telling you just to have his mind, but to have his wisdom, because he is wisdom. So have this mind in you that is a Messiah. It means have this wisdom in you. God wants us, you and I, to have a mind of wisdom. Please let that settle in and think about it in terms. My mind should be a mind of wisdom. Look at all of the perplexing problems and look at everything that I am facing and the challenges that I'm facing. And sometimes we turn a little mohill into a mountain and we should never have even arrived to, to turn that mohill into a mountain if we had wisdom. Well, where have you been tapping in that you don't have the wisdom? Maybe you don't have the wisdom, you just have the name. Maybe you just have the Savior, but you, you said, thank you for saving me. I'm not interested in your wisdom. I, I, I just got to get along with people because we're all human beings. Oh, come, let's just get along. can we just get along? It's not just about getting along, it's about having answers to all of these issues and problems. Deceiving spirits, false prophets, false teachers, we gotta deal with it. You can do it if you have wisdom. 
Now, mentally, there should never be a problem of knowing whether something or someone is right or wrong in the natural realm. One of the ways of knowing that is by observing, testing the spirits. By observing and also inquiring, Do you know that God will make time for you if you're a person of wisdom and give you more than 24 hours a day because you'll be getting calls from all over the nation when they find out that you have wisdom. He's going to multiply the fishes. He's going to multiply the bread. In other words, we don't know exactly how He'll do it, but you're going to have time to respond with the wisdom that you have to multitudes of people. And at times, he'll just bring you out from within your circumference and put you before a pulpit because it seems like you're outstanding in the realm of wisdom. See, God looked for somebody with wisdom. Well, at one time, he found none. We stand in the gap and be able to deal with issues of life. The moment that Solomon was faced with making a decision of, as we know this story, who the child belongs to between these two women. Solomon, folks, listen. Solomon did not say, I hope I'll make the right decision. I mean, this baby's at stake here, and I want to be sure it gets it to the right mom. I don't think he even gave it a, a single thought. And here we are in our lives making decisions about this and about that, and I hope we're making the right decision, you know, and going on this trip or you know, right decision on how we're spending this money, uh, right decision into what kind of friendships and relations going to have. I, I hope I don't make a mistake. If you have wisdom, you will not make a mistake. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the moment that came there, he already knew that he would make the right decision. Why? Because he had wisdom from God. Uh -huh. Who is your savior? The man of wisdom. <laughs> it's like saying, uh, who did you marry? A man of wisdom, a woman of wisdom. And I'm tapping into that wisdom every single day. Hallelujah. It's so sad. I, I find it oftentimes incredible with all the issues and problems that exist that we're not using the wisdoms of God when it's been there all the time waiting patiently in line for us to tap into the wisdom because he says, I'll give you all the wisdom that you will ever need. God will give you wisdom upon wisdom to deal with every level of, of, of problems that you may face. And if, if someone of great stature comes, uh, they will be dumbfounded when you open your mouth for, because he says, I'll even speak through the mouth of babes to confound the wise. Yes. Right? So what is our state of being? What is the state of being we must be in to, to obtain wisdom today. I looked at the book of Job in chapter 28, a number of verses they're starting actually in verse 12, where it reveals to us how wisdom can be found. Starting in verse 12 says, but where, but where shall chokmah, wisdom, be found? And where is the makom? Where is the makom bina? Where is the source of wisdom? 13 says, Enosh knoweth not the price thereof. Translated means, no one knows the price, neither is it found in the Eretz Ha'ayim. 
can I be even found in the land of the living? 14. The Tichom, the, the, the deep or the abyss, saith, it is not in me. And uh, the yam, the word for yam is in, he, in English is the sea saith, it's not within me. Oh, what is this showing us so far? Is that you can look all over the place in high places, low places in the sea as well. And, and try to find the right kind of wisdom, but forgetting that wisdom is standing right by your own side. He's the Messiah. Fifteen, it cannot be gotten in, in, in exchange for fine gold, neither shall kesef, neither silver be weighted for the price thereof. It cannot be value sixteen, with the fine gold of Ophir, with the precious onyx or the sapphire. Thus the za'av and the crystal, that means glass, cannot equal wisdom, and the exchange of it shall not be for the jewel of gold, nor shall mention be made of coral and crystal for the price of chogmah, wisdom is above pearls. So we're talking about wisdom, you're talking about something that, that is priceless. It's above the most precious diamond and pearls and silver. Money cannot buy it because it's so high in value and God gave it to Solomon and you are the bride of wisdom. And to be the bride of wisdom and not know who you are marrying is to know that when you got engaged to him you never took the time to know the wisdom of your groom. My, my. I'll move down to 23. Elohim understandeth the way to wisdom. And he knoweth the, the makom thereof. He knows the place where it is of it. For he looketh to the getzot haaretz. He looks to the ends of the earth. That, that shows me that he even looks all the way to Hawaii. And seeth all Shomaim, all of heaven, the, the weight he appointed for the Ruach HaGodesh, for the Holy Spirit, and, and he weighteth the Mayim, the waters by measure, when he made a decree for the Matar, for the rain, and a the rech and a way for the lightning of the thunder. Then he did, then did he see it. So, so here we are learning something about God, is that wisdom is something that he came up with. The idea of wisdom he came up with just like he said, let us make man. There was no man before. So he created man in his image. And he realized that man one day is going to need the wisdom, that Adam's going to need wisdom. So he brought forth this idea of how to bring his wisdom and formulate the formula for Adam, for mankind. So the more that we depart from the things of the flesh, guess what happens? The greater the wisdom shall be given to us because it is the things of the flesh that holds back the wisdoms of God. So what is it that we need to do? Well, I think we need to distance ourselves from how we speak, how we treat each other how we think, because we're not thinking with wisdom. But when you begin to embrace the wisdoms of God, 
you, you know, then you have what kind of a mind? You have the mind of the Lord. If you have the mind of the Lord, every issue that you will deal with will be correct. So the Hebrew word for wisdom is what? Chok, chokmah. Okay, so the Bible says that King Solomon was the wisest person in the world at his time. The question would be, and I think we got part of the answer already, how did Solomon become so wise? You know, he did not have the, the infilling of the Holy Spirit like we have today. The root word, or let me put it this way, there is a parent root word for chokmah. So chokmah is wisdom, but the parent root for this word chokmah is the word cham. I started to mention this last week. That's K-H-A-M, or C-H-A-M, cham. And this word cham means heat. All right, so I have in your notes here the following Hebrew words are all derived from the parent root ham, or K-H-A-M, or H-H-A-M. It means heat. And heat is, uh, the, is the root of the word Hagham. Say Hagham. Okay, so Hagham is an important word because Hagham in Hebrew means wise. Like wise men. So let's be sure we have it in the right order. The parent word for wisdom is what? Ham, which means what? Heat. And the root word for heat is what? Hakam, which means what? Wise. So the term hakam, which means wise, refers to someone that is what? Wise. Like, uh, for example, um, a Torah scholar or a pastor that is an amazing teacher. He would be a hakam. He would be wise. Mm -hmm. He would be a respected teacher. In the Sephardic Hebrew, because I'm Sephardic Hebrew, the usage of this word hakam has the same meaning for rabbi. Mm -hmm. So if you reach the level where you are wise, you are like a rabbi. And Yeshua was a rabbi, and rabbi means what? Teacher. teacher. So you can teach your children, teach your family, teach your neighbors. So I mentioned that the parent word for chokmah, wisdom, okay, is what? So the word appears as Hebrew with the letters mim and het. Cham, mim and het. It, that would be in its original pictograph. If you still have from your notes the, the ancient Hebrew letters, you'll see how the Hebrew letters mim and het look. The letter mim is a letter for what? Water. Mm -hmm. And the letter he is the letter for what? It's like a fence or a wall that separates. So two letters, what are they? Mim, water, and het, which is what? A fence that separates. You have that now? So why don't you go ahead and write those two letters right now in your notes. Write the letter Mem and Chet. Uh -huh. So the, the letter Mem means what? Water. So you put water next to it. And then Chet puts what? 
wall. And a wall does what? Separates. So put chet, wall, and then dash, separate. Right. So if you have a, a wall or a fence in your house, it's to separate your home from people you don't want to enter into your property, right? All right, so that's a, that's a separate right there. That's really important in our teaching here. Okay, so keep taking down uh, some notes here. I, I, I want to, and, and you, re, you already wrote it down. When you combine these two letters, mim and het, what then do you have? Or what does it mean? You combine them, what do you have now? Water. Uh, separate waters. Separate waters. You combine, see, two letters, mim and het. You have water, and then you have what? Separate. Okay. Remember that Hebrew is from right to left. So you put separate waters. You just learned two Hebrew letters, and those two Hebrew letters combined together mean what? Separate waters. Now, what happens when you, when heat is applied to water? It begins to boil, and then what happens to the water? It begins to evaporate. So there we have eva evaporation, and that means that what took place? A separation. You see that? The evaporation is a separation. What did the Lord said? Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Flow. So now, from your innermost being, there's been waters that have been separated from other waters. And he spoke and he said, it is the Spirit. Okay, so, separate waters. The, I'm going to now get into the following words there that you have there. The first one is the word chemet, chemet. The word chemet means skin, but skin dash, put the word skin next to that, skin and then dash, bag, B-A-G. What, do you, you know the scriptures is not to put new wine in what? Old wine skins, okay? So this is like a, a wine skin, but this is not an actual wine skin. It's just a bag or a skin bag. That's why we have to go to the next one that says chema. And that, let me remind you that each one of these in the beginning has the word wisdom. So the word chema means cheese. Okay, so you write down cheese. So this is how it works. In ancient days when milk was, got soured, remember they'd get it from the sheep, from the goats, yeah. But when the, or the cows or the goats, when it got soured, the milk was placed into a skin bag. And that skin bag was set out in, to the sun so that it might what? Heat, heat. And where did we get the word heat? Wisdom. It was set out to get lots of wisdom. When you spend a lot of time under the sun of God, you're going to get what? A lot of wisdom. And maybe initially you were soured. But God took something that was soured and God soured, soured relationships, but he's going to turn that sour relationship into a relationship of wisdom. You see, it cannot just happen because you said, I'm sorry. Sorry does not really do the healing. 
because our world sorry it's almost fake when you don't know the depths and the profoundness of what sorry should actually be what you're saying is this i accept the fact that i was very sour sorry sour i'm the one that was soured and i need to do something about me being so soured i need a heavenly skin bag so what happens then you shake you shake okay you put it in the sun and then you shake it and then what happens when you're shaking that because it's getting the sun there's going to be natural enzymes in the skin bag that causes the water to begin to separate inside of the skin bag now we already learned about water when you heat it you know what happens it evaporates and it separates so what we need to do is to get into under the wings of the almighty in a cocoon state before god because we were soured and let him begin to do a little bit of shaking in us before we go and tell someone i'm sorry i'm the one at fault because when you come out there you will be able to heal the other person but that's not what happens in in christian uh, relationships which is says i'm sorry forgive me i i'm going to share and i share a lot of tears i'm really sorry 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 but you don't know that the person's not being healed with that and you say i already told him that i'm sorry and i repented from this but you really don't know what you've been doing because why because you lack wisdom you see it's all about wisdom and if you don't have wisdom you shouldn't even be a leader you shouldn't even have gotten married less been in ministry but you're coveting all of this and this is why we, we a little bit earlier we mentioned to you why there's so many false teachers and false prophets because they don't have wisdom so they manipulate And when you tell someone you're sorry and you really don't know what you're doing you're manipulating you're hoping that that person gets it and you just walk away believing that you've done a beautiful job you might have made things worse because they discern there's no wisdom in what you have said and you walk in out you know all righteous do you see the debility how how weak the body of the lord is that we cannot even help each other with the issues of problems and yet we know that the wisdoms of god is standing right by our side and and we don't even tap into that wisdom what do you say these words of me may the lord have mercy on us and he will if you know what you're saying <laughs> but if you're just saying it because that's what you want him to have mercy you have to know also the all merciful in all his mercy because if you know him in all his mercy you would have been merciful that's why the lord is blessed is the what the merciful we're not merciful we're hardly merciful we just want to get out of the hot water <laughs> that's why you need to get into the skin bag <laughs> hallelujah all right so ha hama hag ma is the word for sun right Hagma means what? We gave it to you earlier. 
Hagma means what? Wise. Okay, so now that you are a Hagma, now that you are wise, you understand the idea of separating. As the word means, one who is able to separate between what is good and bad. This one word, Hagman, wise, it can be also translated as having skills. Have you ever heard the saying, she or he is a skillful communicator? Well, we need to have more skillful in marriage. There's too many fights going on. We need to have more skill, spiritual skill, with the family of God. The family of God. Skillful meaning what? Wise. That's what it means. You cannot afford even to say, you know, I'm not as skillful as you are. What, what, what are you really saying is that I'm not seeking God as much as you are. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, uh, what teacher do you have? Don't we have the same teacher? <laughs> How did I get more skillful than you did? When applied to a rabbi, pastor, and leader, this is the proper word to use. All right, so 2 Chronicles 2.7 says, And now send, send for me a man of hagham. Send to me a man of skill, a man that is wise, wise people, a person that is wise to work in gold. Mm -hmm. Do you notice that it says that he needs wise people to work with gold? Mm -hmm. Would you like to work with gold? Yes. Mm -hmm. If you can work with gold, you can handle gold. It's because you have the skills. Not everyone can work with gold. If God could entrust you with gold, I don't think that he's going to hold back a nice chunk of nugget for you. <laughs> of gold. He says, I, I'm looking for someone that has chokmah, the skill, a person that is wise. People pro provide for yourselves, says, provide for yourself wise men and understanding and knowing for your tribes. So this is what we really need to do. In ancient times, the young girl could not get married because the family had to go find a wise, well even to do young man. He's not just going to let his daughter or their daughter just marry anyone. Mm -hmm. You gotta be sure. You know, when my daughter was gonna get married and her husband to be came and asked me for her hand I said to him no <laughs> did you hear that <laughs> who in the world would say no to your future son-in-law <laughs> because if you don't have wisdom you're going to say yes uh, or if you, if you don't have wisdom, you're going to not say anything to him. You're going to tell your daughter, you know, uh, he's, he's not the right guy for you. But you should be talking to him. Because he's the one that's asking for her hand. And I told him, you know, I don't know if you're faithful. And I said these words, you know, if I were to hire you, because I don't know you that well, to work in the register, and you turn out to be unfaithful, you're gonna take all the cash. I gotta know that you're faithful first. 
You see, if we don't have wisdom, we, we just destroy our kids, destroy our family, destroy our marriages. And cities and nations are being destroyed for lack of our political elected leaders not having wisdom. You want them to have wisdom, but what about you? <laughs> Hallelujah. We're, we're the ones that are supposed to have the wisdom and show them. Why? Because he said, when the righteous rule, that means you have wisdom. Then that's when the people are going to be happy. And we're criticizing this leader and that leader. Look how they're bringing our country. They're, they're just bringing the country down the drain. I just sent a, 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 an email out today, actually, in some Texas. I said, listen, I see too much of this going on. They were focusing so much on Israel being bombed and missiles coming in all over the place. I said, that should never be our focus because we've already read it. Victory is theirs. And no one will be able to defeat and destroy this land. We already know the answer. Why should I be uh, uh, fixed in my fixation on, on what the, the enemy is doing? That's negative. Yeah. I send that out today. I says our focus should be, yes, it's if you watch and you pray, says, what you're going to say and where you're going to lead the people needs to have another page to that. But this is what God says. You don't let him stay in the negative, looking for tomorrow's negative and next week's negative, and you don't have an answer because you don't have the wisdom. And so people will become addicted to just looking at all this negative stuff because you instill in them over and over to keep looking at the negative. And that's exactly what happened when the 12 spies went into the land and 10 of them came back with a negative and it's just messed everybody up because they emphasize the negative. I think we need to go back to our homes. And we need to stop just hearing his word. We have to start believing it. I'm not a man of the wisdom I should be. I'm not that woman of wisdom that I should be. And I've got to repent from it. I've been on the defense of and I put up walls between my brothers and sisters in the ministry because I thought I was going to get hurt, but I'm the one that's doing all the hurting to others. And I've hurt myself to the point of being sick. You know, the last thing I want to happen is that I keep getting younger and you keep getting older. That's the last thing I want to happen. I want you to keep getting younger as I get younger. <laughs> okay? Because I try to think with wisdom. And the wisdom of God says, um, <clears throat> as you think, Daniel, that's what you're going to become. And if you think old, you're going to feel old. But if you think young, then you're going to be able to what? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And as for me, that should never end. Because negativeness is one of the things that pulls you down. And when it pulls you down, you're also pulling down negative juices from your brain and you're poisoning your mind more and more. And pretty soon, you feel like you're the only one that is righteous. 
And Lord, help us. We lack your wisdom. That's why it says, provide for yourself wise men. I would say this, parents, start instilling in your adult children, if you have adult children, wisdom that God is going to bring to you. Because God said that it's not only you and your children, but your children's children. And you've got to leave a legacy if the Lord were to tarry. And that legacy is that your children and your children's children would know his ways. Deuteronomy 1.13. Hallelujah. So a verse found in the book of Isaiah has a very interesting connection between cheese and hagma or hagham. Wisdom. Isaiah 7, 15. He will be eating cheese. Oh my goodness. He will be eating chema and honey when he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right. Do you know that? Cheese. And that cheese just, you know, it wasn't cheese you buy at Safeway, you know. No. First, it's because, because you were speaking sour, okay? And God had to, to heat you up. He had to put you in a bag and seclude you and then shake you really good, give you that really awesome shaking so that when you came out, you'll be able to eat spiritual cheese and honey. It says that you'll receive that from the Lord when you know enough to reject saying the wrong stuff, treating people a certain way, being all tense that your very face reveals. All of that can change because after a real good shaking, the scripture comes alive that he makes all soured milk beautiful in his time. <laughs> Would you say amen to that? <laughs> in his time. You know, this is a tough message for Hasatan to peek in and hear in here because he doesn't want you to understand these teachings of God. Cheese abounds with proteins. That's why it says that. Proteins that are essential for the building blocks in our body, aiding growth and repairing at the same time. Spiritually, the protein in the cheese, spiritually speaking, because it says, you shall eat cheese, spiritually speaking, it is actually talking about the cheese that represents personal development and transformation. That it all begins with the month of Elul, when we do introspection and repentance. And honey in the Bible represents that you get the cheese, but you're going to get the wealth. It represents abundance. But the abundance it's talking about is the wealth of wisdom. Understanding the word of the living God. So the scripture from Isaiah is speaking about the coming of Yeshua. He will be eating cheese, hema, and honey when he knows enough to reject the wrong and the right. He's coming, but first of all, he needs for us to understand this. Okay, did we learn something tonight? Let us stand together. Hallelujah.
Don't forget about turning this in. Abba Father, thank you so much for your word. This is what you talk about when you said heaven and earth will pass away but your word, your Torah, will remain. We have men and women, families here. Tonight, our hearts, our eyes have been opened. We may see, God, that we've missed out. But missing out no more is what our hearts are telling us. I don't want to miss out. I don't want to live in a world, Lord, that is deceiving left and right. I want to make a difference. I want your wisdom. And you said you'll give us all the wisdom. All the wisdom we need. We need to take the proper steps in the right direction to turn the sourness, this inability to possibilities and abilities that we may be and become all that you've called us to be. We are your people. We are your sons and your daughters. We are your mishpucha, we are your familia, your family. And we want to be one in spirit, one in you. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. And now our determination to do exactly what we need and we know that we must do in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead and just give another nice round hand of applause for the highly esteemed Dr. Rabbi Vargas. Thank you. Go ahead and take your seat. Shalom, everyone, and greetings in the matchless name of Yeshua HaMashiach to the highly esteemed Dr. Rabbi. We highly honor you. We salute you. We thank you so much for the great impartation. This is, I do have to say, has, is one of the very tough lessons this very evening. So to God be all the glory because wisdom speaks. And we're grateful that uh, that wisdom that spoke was able to speak to you for us to receive that revelation. To the highly esteemed bishop and uh, the beautiful first lady, we honor you, we salute you. And to the rest of the body of the congregation, shalom, everyone. Um, just a really, you know, a recap on uh, Rabbi's message. My mind works in a way that I try to make those connections. So praise God. Rabbi spoke on Hagma wisdom, which is divinely embodied in the person of Yeshua, right? So he says that Yeshua, he does nothing without hearing from the Father. And the one who is saved is, you know, gives you that wisdom, and that wisdom that has saved us is Yeshua himself. And he spoke on Solomon, and it's so wonderful because Solomon was known for his great wisdom. But yet none could compare with the wisdom of Christ because Christ is the infinite wisdom in himself. And though we all know about the wisdom of Solomon, there is one wisdom, there is one thing that Solomon could not fathom, could not explain what that was. And you must all be familiar with the red cow. He read over the red cow. He had no understanding what that red cow, what this all was about, what that sacrifice of the red cow, because it was very different from all the different sacrifices. And all the sacrifices that were made were done in the inner court, except this one particular red cow where the Lord completely said, take the red cow, but that red cow has to be sacrificed outside of the court area. And that was the wisdom he, he couldn't fathom, he couldn't understand. But praise God, because as Rabbi was saying, wisdom speaks. That red cow represents, you know, is a, a type and shadow of Jesus Christ. Why a red cow? Because it's red represents sin. It represents the blood of Jesus. And why a cow? Because usually they would have like the lamb, right? The sheep. But a cow and the way that a cow was sacrificed, you know, it was that everything was intact, including the blood, the bones, everything. They had to burn it up, the whole thing and it's dung. But 
all the other sacrifices, you know, they had to, you know, the blood was spilled right then and there, except for the red cow. Solomon couldn't understand that. And so Rabbi touches on the part where there is a separation, right? He talks about, you know, the separation like the cheese, right? You know, when the milk is good, the milk turns sour. And so, you know, maybe because I, you know, we're sour, things that are in us, and sometimes we need to sit like under, you know, the, the sun, S-O-N, right? We need to sit under the sun because the sun brings the heat, and the heat takes out that sourness, and then, then we turn that sourness into something wonderful, which is cheese, right? So beautiful as it is, so there is a separation. Likewise, you know, in the burning you know, and sacrifice of the red cow, there is a separation that takes place there because the blood, instead of the blood that's being spilled over, but the blood is burned along with the bones and everything and all the ashes. So everything is combined together. And then when water is added onto it, the ashes separates. Kind of like a separation of what Rabbi was sharing here, the separation, like in the bag, you know, that there's an enzyme, right? Enzyme, and it start to do the separation, amen? So of course, it's a wonderful separation because that shows wisdom in itself. And head man, that's a separate water. And the mystery, you know, of the man is the letter of that water that symbolizes that spring that comes out from the word. It comes spring of wisdom that comes out from the Torah. And that's what you folks have been receiving today. You've been receiving a spring of Torah, you know, the deep revelation of things from Rabbi. You know, just as the water undergo, you know, uh, you know, underground that spring for it, and it brings up this beautiful water, it reveals also the wonderful wisdom that rises up from the mysterious source of God's word. So, trying to put it all together with the Solomon and the wisdom in itself is really having you come, you know, there's, there's a time when we have to be separated, the fence, where Rabbi was saying, sometimes we have to take a step back and be separated and allow the living water to flow in and through us that can only come from the word, the word, the word. And greater the deception, Rabbi touched up on that, greater the deception greater must you be digging into the word. Many people will fall away. They're going to waver away from the word. Even the elect is going to fall away. Why, why are they going to fall away from, you know, because of the great deception? Why? Wisdom. What is wisdom? Yeshua. Wisdom is his word. Wisdom speaks. And I pray that many of us that I receive, you know, the word this very evening from Rabbi, you know, remember, sour things can be made to good things by a separation. But all the great, wonderful enzymes and those vitamins that are in that bag, right, that turns into a beautiful cheese that is edible. And one day, Jesus will be back. And he's coming back very soon. So with all of Solomon's wisdom, nothing can touch the wisdom of that, of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that he has imparted into your own spirit this very evening. But all you're learning, get wisdom. Wisdom speaks. Wisdom is his word. Amen? Amen. And this very evening, um, you know, before you make your way out there, we do have envelopes give cheerfully, give joyfully as an offering um, to our rabbi. With all the wisdom that he's imparted into us, let us receive it with such great thanksgiving and pray good health for each and every one of you. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Father, we give you all glory and honor and praises. We thank you so much for the impartation of the infallible word this very evening on wisdom. Wisdom speaks. And wisdom calls. Even the ocean have says that wisdom is not found here. So, Father, I thank you because wisdom is in Yeshua. And we who received Yeshua as our Lord and Savior, we have that infallible wisdom. That wisdom also can be called the Sophia wisdom, the Greek word for Sophia. Father, we thank you so much, your grace upon grace upon grace that has catapulted our learning to the next level of learning, and we receive it gratefully and with humility. Father, we thank you so much 
Thank you for the blessing and the offering that will be given on to Rabbi this very evening. Father, thank you. Multiply what they are giving a thousandfold. Return back unto them, never lacking, never missing. You are the Psalm 23. Father, you're a great provider, and you have provided for all of our needs. We honor you, Father. We pray that you send forward your warrior angels to keep watch and guide us safely to our homes and to our family. Thank you, Father, for loving us the way that you do. We look forward, Father God. Maranatha, Maranatha, Maranatha. Return back to us soon, O Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeshua HaMashiach. We pray this in Jesus' name. And the saints of God say, Amen, Amen. amen. Shalom, shalom, everyone.